Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Apaca Direct and I'm so happy that you're here with us today. And today we are gonna be talking about the lovely alpaca. And I am gonna be sharing what I like to do with alpaca and then telling you a little bit about uh, what the softness of alpaca and the different qualities of alpaca that are out there so you kinda can make an informed buying decision with your alpaca. So let's see, what are we doing today? Oh my gosh, I have some beautiful projects to show you. And the first project that I have is from Tara. It's called the Highwoods Hat. And this is a free pattern on Ravelry. And Pulled it was it made one. with, do you want to see that yeah, again? A little longer, yeah. Here's the, there it is, right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's our first project. And this is kind of a quick knit. So if you're thinking about doing a last minute hat for Christmas for your loved ones, um, this hat is perfect. And it's using Simply Kriya, which we've talked about before, that it's a super baby alpaca with a chain at construction, but you see how lovely it looks. And I wish I could uh, show you how soft it is, but it is incredibly soft. What she did at her, she changed her, um, the decreases at the top of the hat a little bit. This in the picture was like knit eight, knit two together, and so on and so forth. And she did the knit two together and slips up knits, and which makes this different top, uh, kind of a hat topping. So, see how nice it is? She did a lovely job making this. And I think she did an extra repeat of this chevron pattern that she had here too. So that was absolutely beautiful and makes great Christmas gifts. That was done with two skeins of the Simply Kriya. So when you're knitting it, two skeins, and you'll have some leftover. And But it makes a super gift for those who wanna be super warm. And alpaca is fantastic because when you put it on your head, it is so lightweight that you don't even know that you're wearing it. So it's wonderful. So while we're going along, if you can let us know where you're from and maybe what you're working on so we can learn from you and we read your posts and your comments that you're talking about. And then we use it for future Facebook Live posts and we also just learn from you and we enjoy sharing with each other. So if you want to share with others and press that like button at the, on your phone, that would be great. And so we're going along and also I will be, t yes, Jeff? Oh, there are several people saying hi. Hi, good morning. Good so morning, everyone. You have Debbie That's from fantastic. the East Coast and hi, Debbie. Patricia and good several morning. people. Nice yeah. to have you with us. Do you see the hat that I'm wearing? The hat that I'm wearing is called the Norland Hat Pattern, and it is wonderful. It's by Sarah Birch, and if you look at this pattern right here, up here in the top that's her sample of course you can tell right off the bat that I started with the dark color for my brim and I changed it my brim is stockinette stitch and it's a provisional passed on and then I went ahead and knit four inches in stockinette stitch and then I joined the two your uh, provisional cast on with my regular knitting and then I had to increase and I, if you look at Kelly Loves Alpaca, which is my Ravelry page, it tells about all the different changes that I made to my hat to make it work for me. Because uh, when I started this pattern, the first thing that I found is when I cast on the 150 stitches that it asked for, I had a hat that was huge. It was huge. Um, I know my gauge was off, but anyways, it was going to be too big for me. So I ended up casting on 130, and my hat is a little over, it's right around nine and a half inches wide um, on the band area, so it fits perfectly over my head and plenty of room for stretch, and not too loose and not too tight. I really like it. Also, I added uh, four rounds to my pattern, and what I did, let me see if I can find this pattern. Oh my gosh, I have all kinds of notes on here. And, but you can see on these right here where it says repeat times two. Let me show it, Jim. And that's where I added four rounds so that I could make my hat more of a slouch hat. And so I go did that. And, and it side. would be perfectly serviceable, I think. What's that, Jim? I'll go ahead and turn to the side so they can see it. What? Your hat. Go ahead and turn to the side a little bit so they can see oh, the side. Oh, sorry. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And I, I really, really like it. It's fun. I What I used was the um, Royal Alpaca um, by Blue Sky. It is a fingering weight yarn, so I used one in this tan color way. And then I used a Madeline Tosh uh, sock. 
Uh, actually, I think it was Twist Light that I used, and it has a little bit of nylon in it, so I'll have some nice durability to it, and then it has that hand paint look to it, So, but more of a tonal colorway instead of a uh, deeply variegated colorway. So um, yes, that worked great for me. And what else did I do on that? Um, oh, this Norland hat pattern. It's been in the top 20 for almost a month now. And it also comes with some, uh, I'm gonna be doing mittens. And let me see if I can show you the mitten place uh, page. I already had to start um, looking at different ways that I can change the pattern, of course. Not because I really wanted to, but because with my hand, I wear a five and a half glove. It's a little bit above, it's like a youth large. And so most gloves do not fit me, they're all too big. So I'm trying to change these patterns so that they will fit my hand. And I think this uh, pattern says um, it's like eight inches round, which is, it's not gonna work for me. It's too, uh, definitely gonna be too big, no matter how much I try to kill my yarn. So I was looking for the part for the mittens and I don't see it in here. I must have it at home. Um, but I'm gonna have to make it shorter top to bottom. And a couple ideas that I'm talking about is this is the hat pattern. And if you look at the, um, the, the chart for the hat and the chart for the, oh, here's the mittens, but this is not the one that I was writing on. It is uh, shorter, the hat from top to, uh, from the bottom to the top, it's shorter. So there was uh, another Ravelry person who did it for her daughter and she actually used the hat uh, repeats to be able to make it shorter. And so I'm gonna have to do something like that to make mine shorter. But I'm really enjoying knitting with this and I love using Royal Alpaca and using the um, Madeline Tosh uh, Merino is really nice because it gives you a nice uh, durability to it that the Royal Alpaca might not have as be as durable, but using them both in color work. So, okay, so I'm gonna take my hat off and show you the inside of it. So, remember last week when I said I, I held my uh, yarn so that the um, tree would stand out, I had to put the light color in my left hand. And you can see here that the light color shows up more than the dark color, so it's more dominant. And what that did for me is when I was making my trees, it made the trees stand out more. So holding that light colored yarn in your left hand, and even though I'm continental knitter, it was a lot more work for me, but actually, you know what? It's really awesome because I am learning to knit with my right hand, doing the classic style of knitting, and I'm getting more and more comfortable with it. So I imagine by the time I'm done with my mittens, I can almost knit as fast with my right hand as I can with my left hand. So that is phenomenal to, for me to be able to learn something new. You know how much I love learning things that are new. And so I really enjoyed doing this hat pattern. And this hat combines cables and the color work. And so you don't often find that. So I thought it was pretty cool. Really fun knit. Sarah did a great job making this very unique pattern and I would highly recommend it. Now, the next uh, project I'm gonna be working, talking about is one that Brittany, one of our knitters here at Alpaca Direct, she also crochets, so I'm hoping to get more crocheted projects from her. This one's called the Capricious Hat and it's by Lisa K. Ross. And this is using Royal Alpaca again. And that is a really nice lace pattern and twisted ribbing on the bottom. Very, very pretty. She did a great job on this pattern. And I think she did it in just a few days. She works very quick, quick knitter, <laughs> which is awesome because then we can get on to our the next project. <laughs> and then I wanted to show you this again. I still haven't given it to Evie yet. It's for my granddaughter and she is just six months old now and she has, her head is 18 inches around so she has a big head. And so this is um, going to fit her just perfectly. So, and it matches her two jackets, winter jackets that I bought her. I bought her her North Face jacket down so she's ready for winter. And this will give her a hat that'll go underneath her hood to keep her extra warm. 
And anyways, when I'm out in the real, real cold weather, I love using my alpaca because I know that I'll be safe and I'll be warm. So other people that are with me, they might be wearing wool and they're going, I'm cold and they have to go in. And guess what? I'm out there having a great time. Not cold at all. No, even when I am wearing my alpaca, I always follow a rule. And that rule is only wear one or two alpaca items at a time. Because if you don't, you might be blowing smoke out your ears because you're so hot. I remember this funny story. Okay, so the day after Christmas, I have a twin sister. I'm actually a triplet, but my twin sister, Shelly, we made her this uh, lovely, it was leg warmers and a hat set. And she didn't wash her hair, but she wanted to wear her hat. So she went to the mall and she was wearing the leg warmers and the hat and she had sweat dripping off of her brow because she was so hot. She didn't account for the fact that she would actually be inside where the heat was on. <laughs> anyway, it's totally funny. I got a good laugh out of that one. It's like, haven't I told you not to wear too many alpaca items at once? Cause she was wearing socks, leg warmers and a hat, which was way too much, too much alpaca. Even though it's fantastic, it's completely hot. So anyways, oh, so that leads me to I wanted to talk to you about the different grades of alpaca, okay? So I'm gonna read off my sheet, and this is a blog article that we have on our website. And there are different grades of alpaca, okay? There is grade one, which is ultra fine or royal, and it's micron count of less than 19, and it is very rare and only the finest alpaca. And when I'm talking about royal alpaca, I'm talking about these little guys and I'm talking about this yarn okay this is royal alpaca now it's a little bit more expensive so you know how I always say you know buy what buy for the project okay so you don't need royal alpaca per se on your leg warmers because it's not touching your skin or your slippers because your feet are tough and you don't need that soft of alpaca because it's gonna be more expensive and you're gonna be over buying for the project. You don't wanna over buy for the project. So what I use for my alpaca and I'm doing slippers and stuff like that, I use this lovely ultra alpaca or ultra alpaca chunky. And this is not as fine a, of a micron count as this really expensive alpaca, but it's cheaper and it's 50% alpaca and 50% wool. So you get the structure of wool and you get the warmth of alpaca. So this is great for slippers. I have used this over and over. And if you're using doing fingerless mitts and you wanna do color work, this ultra alpaca light is fantastic because it's not that expensive. It doesn't have a huge yardage and you can afford to buy several colors without breaking the bank and you're not going to have so much left over you know like a lot of these fingering weight yarns it's 437 yards that you're buying you have a huge amount of leftover and you're going what am i going to do with it so with this ultra alpaca light maybe you could do two sets of mittens and you wouldn't have any leftover so this is a product to keep in mind perfect for mittens or footwear and so, and great for color work because of the yardage on it, right? And then I just wanted to show you this Eco Duo yarn, and I love Eco Duo by Cascade. And this, if you look at the back of it, it's 70% undyed baby alpaca and 30% undyed merino wool. So it's got the best of the best. And this makes great hats, and it does this like subtle color, color striping on it, not, um, not in your face stripes, but pretty. Okay, and the thing about this, it makes great hats. Um, I wouldn't put this on slippers or something like that. That's gonna, you're gonna have to have it a little harder wearing because not only is it alpaca, which doesn't have a lot of barbs on it and can slip apart, but it is single ply, which is a double whammy. So use this yarn for hats and stuff like that and it will be fine because on your head, it's not getting a lot of friction where it would uh, wear out faster. So it's perfect for hats and stuff like that, but not mittens per se. I, I would use ultra alpaca in place of that. And keeping the royal alpaca 
for the uh, more delicate items. If you wanted to do a scarf that was gonna be around your neck or something like that, this Royal Alpaca is fantastic because no itch. I mean, you have no itch at all. So Royal Alpaca for stuff that's gonna be next to your skin. Then pay the extra money and you'll be so happy you did. You're gonna go, oh my gosh, a little slice of heaven. So keep that yarn in mind for that. And this was the yarn that we had on sale. And this, if you wanted to do a cowl out of this, oh my gosh, you'd what is be it? in love. This is called Simply Kriya. It's 100% super baby alpaca. And it definitely feels, oh, heaven, a little slice of heaven. It's fantastic. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is another alpaca yarn, and, and this is baby alpaca. Perfect for hats, um, not mittens or gloves. It won't hold up very well. It'll take you less time to ruin it than it took you to knit it if you do mittens or gloves out of it. So I would say take that ultra alpaca chunky in this and make your mittens and gloves, and they will hold up, and save this yarn for a cowl or a hat. Now, I wanted to caution you when you're making hats with 100% baby alpaca yarn is it's going to stretch out over time. So if you have a 20 inch head and you're gonna make a brim that is nine inches before it's blocked, I almost guarantee that before you use it too many times, it's gonna be too sloppy on your head. So make it a little bit more snug, make it like eight and a half inches wide. And then when you block it, it's nine and a half inches wide and you still have an inch or two left for stretch on your head. So it's not um, tight on your head, but it actually stays on your head and doesn't fall right over your eyes. So that is a great thing to do. Got a few more people joining from the East Coast Hi, and Oklahoma. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Oh my gosh, I'm talking about lovely alpaca today and you know how passionate I am about alpaca. I just love it. So now we're going back to our, our chart. So when you're buying these yarns, it will tell you whether it's baby alpaca or what it is, okay? But the um, Royal Alpaca is number one, is rare and more a little more expensive. Grade two is baby alpaca and it's 19 to 22.9 micron count. And the, it's the most common high-end alpaca that's on the market. Then we have a grade three, which is a fine 23 to 25. And this one is a 23 to a 25. So it's not as soft, but it's completely serviceable. So put it on your feet, put it on your hands, and leave the finer micron count for your head and around your neck, okay? And then the grade five, which is the adult, I don't think we usually never see anything below that. So that is kind of irrelevant to what we're talking about today. So what I'm saying, the things that I love to make from alpaca, I wanted to go through this again with you, is with your hats, make sure that it is a little more fitted because over time it's gonna stretch out. And then make sure you don't wear more than one or two alpaca items at a time, especially when you're going to be inside a building where it's heated because you might be going crazy trying to get it off because you're too hot. So what I do when I'm wearing alpaca is I layer. I wear a t-shirt, a tank top, a t-shirt, a little jacket is usually what I wear so that I can start taking off layers as I go so I don't get too hot. There's okay. a question, why is it so warm? Oh, it's a hollow core fiber so it traps the heat inside the actual fiber and there aren't very many fibers in the whole wide world that do this and it is self insulating so it's warmer than wool so when I was growing up and I was little I we were my um, uh, the triplets uh, my sister and my brother we were born like two pounds each we were tiny and my mom actually um, had us in shoe boxes okay and um, so I was kind of a little sickly um, when I was growing up and everyone else in my family is over six foot tall now um, My twin sister and I are five foot one or five foot one and a half So we didn't quite grow and we weren't super super healthy growing up and so we were always cold I was always freezing. I mean my hands were like icicles to touch 
right? And so then one day I found alpaca and I didn't realize what was going on for a little bit. It took me like a week to figure it out. And then I'm going, honey, I'm not cold anymore. I'm not complaining about being cold. I mean, I was so miserable when we'd go out skiing, I would be out for less than a half an hour and I would be so cold, my fingers would be burning from, the, from being so cold. And now with alpaca, my hands are for the most part, when I'm wearing alpaca, I have warm hands and I'm comfortable. I can actually live a comfortable life and not be too cold. So those of you out there that are, have the problem that I had, I'm telling you, find alpaca because it will change your life. It'll totally change your life. Matter of fact, when I gave it to my mom, she doesn't get as cold as we do necessarily. And she um, took all of her socks out of her drawer and got rid of them. And I gave her all alpaca socks because that's all she wants to wear now. And we make, we sell alpaca socks. And these are extreme winter boot socks. These are the most um, popular sock style that we have and the warmest sock style. And it has full terry throughout, which it means it, it has these full loops through the, throughout the whole sock. And that keeps you nice and warm. But it is machine washable and it is much more durable than the socks that we used to see at the alpaca shows when we first started going. We'd pay $20 for a pair of socks and they would felt right away. Um, but these don't do that. Okay, we have just enough alpaca in them to make your feet warm, but not so much that the sock can, is not stable. So if, you're, if you don't want to knit your own socks or you don't know how to knit your own socks, I would highly recommend just trying one pair. That's all you need to do. Try one pair of extreme boot socks and you will be coming back for more. <laughs> I mean, we even have our male people that have bought like a pair of socks for every day of the week because they can't live without the alpaca because it gets cold here and it snows. It's down and uh, gets down into the teens in, at nighttime and it's very cold. So um, anyway, the alpaca is fantastic for that. So, oh, also, okay. Now, um, uh, the other things that I wanted to mention that I just love is uh, leg warmers. And Jim, can you show them? I'm wearing my leg warmers today. It's finally gotten cool enough to where I can actually wear my leg warmers. And these are called gray, gray leg warmers. And I never realized how fantastic leg warmers are until I actually made them and put them on my legs. And I can tell you that they will, they're like as good as wearing merino leggings underneath your, you know, like the long johns. They're as good as that. Um, but you can take them off anytime you want to or you get too hot. So they are fantastic for that. And then um, the bed socks. I have seen so many people make bed socks from baby alpaca. And baby, that's one time I would say that you could actually use your baby alpaca, 100% alpaca, and make bed socks because if you're really cold when you go to bed and you can't get warm, I'm telling you, that little lightweight sock from Baby Alpaca Yarn, and you'll be as toasty as they come. You'll be trying to throw the covers off. You'll be giving all the covers to your husband, going, here, honey, take these. I don't need them. <laughs> yeah, and that's what alpaca does for you. It makes you, it makes you happy, actually. Yeah, so anyways, and then you know how much I love slippers made from alpaca. And so I wear slippers every single day made from the Ultra Alpaca Chunky. And it is fantastic. Um, make sure that you're pressing the like button as you go along and share with your friends and let them know so that we can learn from each other. And um, then we can learn from each other and grow. Because every day I love to learn something new. And this last week was my adventure with my cables and color work. And I actually held my yarn in my left hand for anything that you want to stand out like this light colored i held it in my left hand and then it makes your trees just come out so beautifully and that was great fun now i've had several people on our facebook and vip groups talking about how do we cast on four mittens two at a time and you say what is she talking about 
this is what I'm talking about. And my, don't mind my mess. I already untangled this once today and look at it. It looks like a disaster already, but it's really not. It's just a minor setback. But here's my two at a time. And these are gonna be mittens that I'm making. And this pattern is called M-I-L-E-T. Millet? I don't know. But it's by Isolde Teague. And it is really cute. And let me show you what they look like. And you guys might have seen this pattern before. And this is beautiful. And I am also trying to, I have to adjust this pattern as well because goodness gracious, it's too big too. It's okay, for those of us out there that have little hands, we just do a little more math. And math is okay because we wanna keep our brain sharp and there's such thing as a calculator. And I love calculators, they take all the work out of the math for me. So, I just use the calculator and I'll adjust my numbers. So now, I'm going to show you how you would cast on to knit in the round using the magic loop method for mittens or socks or gloves or whatever you want to make. But if you can't cast on the stitches, you can't make it, right? So right here, I've been messing around with the long tail cast on. And say that I have 20 stitches for each mitten or sock or glove that I'm gonna be working on, right? So I have nine right now. Now I'm going to cast on my last stitch. That makes 10. Do you notice I have a nice long tail? This is so that I can cast on the other 10 stitches when I'm ready. And I'm not ready yet. So I've cast on my 10 stitches. Here's the big trick. Slide your work over to the right. See that? You slid your work over to the right. Now drop that needle. You just drop it on the table. Don't even think about it. Make sure that you, when you're having your yarn wound, and you can have, we can wind with yarn for you. You should have it wound in a cake so you can use the inside for one mitt and the outside for the other mitt, okay? If you don't do that, then you would have to have, you could have two, two skeins of yarn. You could work from two, one for, you could take two little skeins like this and work from one for one mitt and one from the other for the other mitt. Of course, they'd probably be in the same color, right? All right, so then the next thing we do is we go and cast two, three, four. We're gonna cast five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So I have all the stitches for the second one, right? Then I go five, 10, right? Hold on a second here. Five, 10, and this one is, one second, five, 10, Yes, that's perfect. Okay, then you would take 10 stitches and you split it in half, okay? Now watch this, I'm running my cord up here. Okay, now let's look at what we got here. So we have 10 and 10 on this needle. And do you see how we have right over here, our other side only has 10 stitches on it, but now we need to cast on the rest. So we just cast on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. There we go. Guess what we've just done? We've cast it on for both of our mitts and we work these into position so everything's pointing in the right direction. And here's our last stitch. We know that's our last stitch because that's where the working yarn is coming from. So we have this other needle put into position and we would just begin knitting, right? So then they're attached.
Okay, so we knit our first stitches and I'm just gonna do it in stockinette so I can show you. Jim, are you close enough? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just knitting along. I use continental style. And then here is our other stitches right here. And we gotta untwist them so they're, we don't want them twisted when we're working. And then we gotta get rid of our tail so we're not knitting with the tail. Let's bring this around here. Why don't you turn this way a little? One second, sweetie. The other way. Which way? This way. No, this. turn this way. Oh, yeah. turn this way? Yeah, yeah. And then right here, then I would begin knitting again on this side with my working yarn. So, and then when I get done here, I will have half of two mittens knit. And then I would just proceed on. They're joined. We push our needles into position. And here's my working yarn. And I would just continue on knitting. There's that. And see this tail. We've got to get the tail out of the way. And you just have your stitches kissing. See? You're all casted on. So that's how you would do a cast on for two at a time socks, mittens, gloves, whatever you want to do. You could do it. Anyways, you could even make two baby hats at once or two booties at once if they're, you know, the finish free booties or what have you. They're fantastic. You can do that and it's super, super easy. So all of you in, oh, 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 I just thought of something. Our, I didn't even mention our prizes. So for the prize for this last week was our Royal Alpaca Petites in this it's kind of a navy blue colorway. And let me see who the winner was today. Who was our lucky winner for today? And tell them how they can win. Yes. Um, this is J.G. Reed. You won! Yay! Hey, you're going to love this yarn. This is a fantastic prize. You get in touch with us and give us your address, and we will ship this out in the mail to you. You won. And the prize for this week was for some lovely eco alpaca. And this eco alpaca is 100% baby alpaca that is undyed and it's by Cascade and it's incredibly soft and it will easily make a hat. So whoever wins this will be able to make a beautiful hat. You can make the whole thing with one skin. Now, you ask yourself, how do I win this lovely prize? And all you have to do is put comments in the comment section. Let us know what you're working on and maybe what you're enjoying or any comments that you have. Write something in the uh, comment section and post your pictures. Maybe you can let us know where you're from and anything you want to tell us. It's all interesting and we all love learning from each other. So whatever you have to post would be great. And so that's how you would enter to win this lovely alpaca, baby alpaca yarn that is undyed and Hmm. Super, super soft. I love it. And for those of you that don't know how to knit out there, we have these sets. We have all kinds of, of items that we have brought in for non-knitters and for people who need to say, stay super warm. It's made out of 100% baby alpaca, super soft. And the prices are really, really good considering they're made from 100% baby alpaca. You can't hardly find that anywhere. And this, these are fantastic quality. We have actually looked far and wide trying to buy the best products so that you can have the best products at the most reasonable prices. And we have scarves and we have hats and we have baby items and we have, oh, we have lots of things. But if you're really interested in buying something, buy it now because what will happen as it gets closer to Christmas time, we will start selling out. And then we have all of our wonderful shoppers asking us, calling us up on the phone. Do you have this? Do you have that? And we start selling out of stuff. And we don't bring it in again until the next season because we don't want to carry that stock through the summer. So we uh, get our Christmas shipment and then we let it sell out. So if you would like something like that that's already made or want to buy a headband or something like that, I mean the headbands are like $25 or less. They're not super expensive. 
and they are double thick and fantastic. So there are some gifts that are reasonably priced and are almost the same price as the yarn that you would purchase to make the item. So if you're in a hurry and you want to buy a beautiful gift, even if you are a knitter, look at the socks and look at the knitwear because it is fantastic. It will keep you super warm and I guarantee you will enjoy it. So was there anything else that I missed, Jim? Um, Suzanne says she's totally hooked on alpaca yarn. Oh, good. Is this Suzanne Jennings? Yeah. The one that, yeah. Uh, Suzanne was the one that was asking me about the cast on, right? Oh, okay. I, th I don't know. Yeah. I think, um, Suzanne, you were probably the one that was asking me about the cast on, I think, believe. And so I hope that helped. And um, if you have any questions, I'm here. I can answer any questions right now, whatever you might have, and would be happy to answer questions. Um, it is super easy to cast on, as, as I showed you. The two tricks that I would remember is when you're casting on the first half of your stitches, make sure you leave enough extra yarn to finish the other half of the stitches. And then make sure to take that 10 stitches that you cast on and slide it all the way over to the right, because otherwise your working yarn may not be in the correct position when you go to pick it up to cast on the other half of the stitches. And it is, that's a fantastic skill. Well, I love learning new skills. And so anything that I can do that'll make my projects more beautiful or faster or easier or whatever, I'm always looking for new skills. So if you guys are um, listening to this and you come up with ideas, please post your ideas so that I can learn from you too because I love learning new stuff. And I, I love learning from a lot of you out there such fantastic knitters that I want to learn from you too. So that is great. This next week we're going to be talking about Christmas is coming and we need gifts that we can make in under an hour. So I'm going to be talking about uh, projects that can be done quickly for those last minute gift ideas. And once again, um, go ahead and post comments in the comment section and we will be announcing this next week who will be winning this lovely Eco Alpaca yarn. And um, what, what, what else did I have, Jim? Well, they can, if they want to try that. Oh yes, this Norland hat pattern by Sarah Birch. I would highly recommend it. She is a fantastic uh, designer and a very original and beautiful hat. And I would say just uh, check, you know, that check my notes on Kelly Loves Alpaca if you are having a problem with gauge and you can see what I did and maybe that will help you. Um, so, and also for those of you out there that are looking for new ideas, we do have a VIP Facebook group that you can join and there are some lovely ladies that are in there that give me, just crack me up and are very talented knitters as well. So you guys have a great week. It was nice sharing with you and remember that alpaca is wonderful and that it makes super hats of footwear and all different kinds of things and it will keep you completely warm. So try alpaca and I'm sure you'll like it. You have a great week. We will talk about last minute gifts for next week. I'll see you at 9.30 next Tuesday.